Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Good morning, friends. Uh, we welcome you to the Daily Fountain of Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion Daily Devotional. Uh, today is Tuesday, April 21st, 2020. And our topic for the day is if we call upon God as Father. Now, our text will be taken from 1 Peter chapter 1, reading from verse 17 to 25. Shall we pray? Most merciful Father, we thank you for the opportunity to come before you this day. We pray, O oh Lord, that you speak expressly to our hearts, that you give us insight and understanding of your word. In the name of Jesus, amen. As I said, our text is taken from 1 Peter 1, 17 to 25, and I'm going to read. And if you call on the Father who without partiality judges according to each one's work, conduct yourselves throughout the time of your stay here in fear, knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold from your aimless conduct received by tradition from your fathers but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. He indeed was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. Who through him believe in God, who raised him from the dead, and gave him glory so that your faith and hope are in God. Since you have purified your souls in obeying the truth, through the Spirit, in sincere love of the brethren, love one another fervently with a pure heart, having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible, through the word of God, which lives and abides forever. Because all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of the grass. The grass withers, and its flower falls away. But the word of the Lord endures forever. Now this is the word which by the gospel was preached to you. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you and welcome again to the daily devotional of the Daily Fountain Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Our topic, as I said earlier, is if we call upon God as Father. If we call upon God as Father. Some of us have worked in the public service, business circle, or ministry. And because of the various positions we occupy, some persons variously call upon us as teacher, some as mentor, minister, counselor, and what have you. But only a handful are qualified to call us as a father or mother. And this group can be uh, through biological, spiritual, or adopted children. And certain requirements are, of course, expected from this group to maintain the parent-child relationship with us. I want to say that this topic, if we call upon God as Father, you know, you cannot call somebody a father that you do not have a relationship with. Somebody that you're close to, be it biological or spiritual or by adoption. 
And so for, for one to call one a father, you have to have a deep relationship with the person. There has to be a deep connect. There has to be intimacy with such a person. And of course, it is expected that as a child, uh, you want to make your father proud. You want to obey the dictates of your father. And then um, it is also expected of a father. A, a father has a responsibility to the, to the child. A, a father, it is the responsibility of the father to cater for the child. It is the responsibility of the father to clothe the child, to bring up the child in the way of the Lord, so that when he grows, he will not depart from it. Uh, and so basically, you would find out that as a child, you, you generally don't pray for your school fees to be paid. You don't pray about your house rent and all the things that we bother about in life. Because it is the responsibility of the father to take care of you. No wonder the Bible says in Matthew 6.33, it says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these other things will be added. So there is this closeness, there is this bond between a father and a son. But in the instance case, we are talking about father as God our father. And you find out that the relationship is almost always the same thing. As a father, as a biological father, when our children err, eh, we correct them in love. Sometimes you have to discipline them. Sometimes you cane them. Sometimes you talk to them. You cancel them and all whatnot. Same also in our relationship with God. When we err, eh, God punishes us, not that he is punishing us to, to, to leave a scar on our body, but he's punishing us to make us take redress, to make us better persons. Because it, God only punishes those that he loves, those that are considered his children. Praise the Lord. And so what qualification, what qualifies one as a child of God? How do we become qualified to be, to, to be able to call him as our father? First, we must be re regenerated by the ever-living word of God. That is to say that we are born again. As we find in First Peter uh, 1, verse 23, where it says, Having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible through the word of God, which lives and abides forever. So one must be born again to be qualified to be a child of God. And so this regeneration is made possible because Jesus Christ as an unblemished sacrificial lamb purchased us by his blood. In our relationship with our biological father, we know that it is also a, a blood thing through the loins of the father. And then, uh, but for a child of God, is no longer that of your biological father. We're not talking about the, the sacrificial lamb that shed his blood on the cross of Calvary for you and I. It's, it's a very precious blood because he was without sin. Uh, but for the love that the Father has for you and I, he gave up his son that we, you and I, can obtain salvation through that ultimate sacrifice. And it, it, it is very, very important to God that we understand him as our father when we have given our lives to Jesus. I remember not long after I, I gave my life to Jesus, I, I had this wonderful experience with God the Father. And he visited me in the room where I was. My middle name, one of my middle names is in Namde. And the meaning of Namde is my father lives. 
And so when God came to me, he asked me the meaning of my name. And I told him that the meaning of my name is my father lives. He said, which father? I said, my earthly father. And he told me that, it, that, that that is not right, that that name is in the present tense, that he is the one that always lives, that there will come a time when my earthly father will no longer be there. And so the, that, the, that name, it, the, the meaning of that name took a new meaning to me. And I was like, no wonder my mom would always call me that. Uh, and I began to appreciate the name much more. And so God wants us to know that he is our father. And he is the one that takes care of, of us. There are certain behaviors that are expected of us if we call God our father in order to maintain the relationship. One, one of such behaviors is good conduct with true reverence to God good conduct with true reverence to God. We must reverence him. First Peter 1 Peter 1.17 where he said, And if you call on the Father who without partiality judges according to each one's work, conduct yourself throughout the time of your stay here in fear. Ecclesiastes 12 says that the whole duty of man is to fear God and to obey his commandments. There must be that reverential fear if God indeed is your father. If you must call upon God as your father, you must fear him reverentially. Number two is freedom from godless traditions inherited from our forefathers. So many of us have inherited uh, so many traditions from our forefathers uh, that does not go well with our Christian faith. In 1 Peter 1, 18, he said, Knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things, like silver or gold, from your aimless conduct received by traditions from your fathers. So we must desist from all such. Number three, life centered on faith and hope on God in every area. Our lives must be centered on faith and hope on God in every sphere of life. 1 Peter 1.21 Who through him believed in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory so that your faith and hope are in God. Our faith and hope must be in God and God alone. And number four, the last but not the least, is sincere affection and love for the brethren. Sincere affection and love for the brethren. 1 Peter 1.22 Since you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit in sincere love of the brethren, love one another fervently with a pure heart. And so God is saying to us as his children to love one another with a pure, a pure heart. You know, caring for one another, looking out for one another, watching each other's back as his children. That is his expectation of us if we must call upon him as our father. Looking out for those in the household of faith first. You know, being our brother's keeper. Praying for one another. Encouraging one another. Rebuking one another in love when we err. These are the expectations of God for us as his children. And my prayer is that God would help us to do that always at all times in Jesus name. So I want to ask in as I begin to conclude, have you surrendered your life to Jesus? If you have not, I want to say that today is your day of salvation. Today is your day of salvation. And I want to ask that you ask Jesus to come into your heart. Invite him and make a conscious effort to receive him in your heart as your Lord and personal Savior. And I guarantee you, your life will never be the same again in Jesus' name. I also want to enjoin us to adhere to these instructions by Apostle Peter to maintain an intimate 
and deep relationship with God. An intimate and deep relationship with God. Knowing that he is an impartial judge whose word endures forever. As, as a child, in our relationship with our Father, our Heavenly Father, when people see us, they should be able to see the attributes. They should be able to see the characteristics and the virtues of God in us. No wonder sometimes you see some people and they say, ah, he looks like, just like his father. He behaves just like his father. We're talking about now biological father. The same thing is expected of us as children of God, as our heavenly father. When people see us, they should see the love of Christ in us. There should be no, I mean, there should be no difference whatsoever. They, they should see Christ in us. They should see our Father in us. They should see that love that has been shed abroad in our hearts. We should be dispensers of such love. A love that is unfailing and unending. Uh, sometimes we begin to wonder how come God cares so much about us. We that are rotten, if not for his grace. I pray that as he said in his word that he will never leave us nor forsake us. And that all the days of our lives we will continually call him our father. No wonder the Lord's prayer say, our, started with our father. Our father. We can only call him our father when we know him, when we have come to his saving knowledge, when we walk according to his precepts, when there is a deep communion, deep relationship. And depending on how much you trust him, how, how deep the relationship, that will determine how much of himself he will reveal to us, how much of his secrets that he will reveal to you as a son. Praise the Lord. Shall we pray? Merciful Father, we thank you. We thank you because indeed you are a great father. None can compare to you. You are a great God. Without you, we are nothing. It is in you that we live and walk and have our being. And so we pray thee, O oh Lord, even this day, for those that don't have such a privilege, for those that cannot be enveloped in the warmth of your love, we pray that today, O oh Lord, they will meet with you. That today, O oh Lord, they will surrender to you. That they also will begin to enjoy this awesome grace, this awesome love that we, <coughs> that we enjoy in our work with you. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you for the privilege to be called a co heir a co-laborer. Join hands with you. Blessed be your holy name. We we'll give you all the praise. We we'll give you all the honor. Be thou exalted. In Jesus' most wonderful, awesome, and precious name, we pray. Amen and amen. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of the Daily Fountain. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen.